thank you uh, for joining. So I'm going to show you how to uh, onboard to the uh, Dataflow Studio feature that was uh, recently released and limited availability. So I'm in the data science uh, service. I've created a notebook session before. Um, the notebook session that I created uh, is a standard one, so you can use the shape that you want. Um, um, there's, there's no restriction there. I also completed the steps all the way to step four in the onboarding document. So I'm assuming here that you've already created a, a dynamic group of notebook session and, and data flow runs, and that uh, you have given uh, those resources access to various buckets where your data may be located. So I'm making this, that assumption here. So I've uh, created a notebook session. I'm just going to open it. So the first step we're going to go through is installing the Spark 3.2 con environment. So I'm going to go into the Environment Explorer here. Let me zoom in first, it's a, little, a little bit bigger. Let me get rid of this. So let's open the Environment Explorer. And so we see here we have a PySpark 3.2 and Dataflow. Uh, PySpark 3.2 or Spark 3.2.1 is actually the version uh, that will be available for Dataflow Studio. So we're going to use that uh, con environment here. And this, it comes with all the necessary tools, including the Spark Magic commands for Dataflow, uh, prepackaged. So we're just going to copy the ODSC command here to install the uh, Conda pack. And I'm going to go back to the launcher, launch terminal, install the Conda. This will take maybe a, a, a minute or two. So let's wait. All right, so the installation is complete. Now let's take a look to see if the kernel shows up in the launcher. Usually takes a few seconds for it to show up here. Uh, we can take a look at the Environment Explorer here. Let's refresh. So the environment was installed. It's good. All right, so we see here the kernel is available. So I'm going to create a notebook first in that kernel. And the first step that uh, I'm going to Delete this here. So the first step that uh, you may want to uh, do is uh, to set the authentication because um, we're going to do it with ADS. And so ADS will pass the same authentication method to, um, to uh, well, when we use the, uh, when we create the cluster. So we'll use this type of authentication to authenticate against the data flow control plane. Um, so I'm going to use resource principle in this case to authenticate. Uh, oh, sorry. And so um, the next step is uh, to load the uh, Dataflow Magics uh, command. 
So this, these commands will give you control over the remote cluster that you're going to create in a minute. So I'm going to load the magic command. Those are already pre-installed in the con environment, the 3.2, the PySpark 3.2 conda. So you don't really have to install anything else here. And then uh, what I'm going to show you first is the help command, which is very helpful. So the help command includes all of the magic commands that you will need to control the lifecycle of the Spark cluster that you will create. So the first one is probably the create session command, which I'm going to run in a minute. You can use different ones, activate session, use session, you get a status on your cluster. Uh, you can update the session, update the cluster, stop the session, uh, config and all that. So what I'm going to do is uh, first and foremost, we're going to create a cluster. So um, I'm going to start with a um, relatively, it's a small cluster. I'm going to start with that. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste this command that I got from my other notebook. But um, you see here the compartment ID is required. So I'm using the same compartment as my notebook session. And in case you uh, don't have that uh, value uh, handy, what you can do is you can create another notebook. I shouldn't have killed that cell, but you can look at some useful environment variables. And one of them is the notebook session compartment OSID. So this is quite useful uh, to keep. So if I were to print this in my notebook here, um, I'll be able to use the same you know, copy and paste it here from my compartment ID, or just use the environment variable directly. So I'm going to call this session onboarding tutorial. It's Spark version 3.2.1. It has one driver shape, 2.1, standard 2.1 shape. It's going to have only one executor shape. So it's a very small cluster, one, you know, one executor, one driver and one executor. So I'm going to create my session here. It's called onboarding tutorial. So it's going to take a few minutes to create the cluster. Uh, while this is in progress, I'm going to go back to the console, the OCI console here, and then you'll be able to see um, the progress of the cluster creation in the data flow service. So I'm going to go under Alex and AI under data flow. You will see an application called onboarding tutorial that's just uh, created here or in the progress of being created. So if I go under the application, you will see here that there is a run that was accepted. It has two CPUs, and you can get the uh, shape configuration details just above here. So we have one driver shape, one OCPU, 15 gigs of memory, um, and then we have one driver execute shape of one OCPU and 15 gigs of memory. So you see here, this is what, um, what I provided, what I call the create session command here. So let's wait. It's going to take a couple of minutes.
Great, so the cluster was created. So we already have a Spark context available here. So let's execute maybe our uh, first command. So we can look at, um, first of all, the status command on our cluster would be interesting to see. So it tells us that the session that we have currently is in progress. Uh, we have a maximum duration for this session of 1,440 minutes. So far we spent five minutes and then this is the amount of time we have left. These parameters could be changed uh, if you want. So you can have longer sessions. I think the longest you can have is uh, seven days, I believe. So you can update, you can use the update command to change this value and it's gonna stop and restart the cluster and update those values. So um, the other useful uh, command is to look at the config one, which gives you a detail uh, profile of your cluster. So you can use this as a sample payload, for example, to create your uh, next session. So it tells you useful information about uh, the way to add parameters like the, the max duration uh, of your session, the language, uh, all of that. So it's, it's quite useful. Now let's get, uh, let's just execute a very, very simple Spark command. So let's just do, um, let's just print the version of Spark that we have here. So we should see 3.2.1. And that's what we have here. That's good. So the first thing we can do is just uh, run a very simple uh, Spark command to uh, load a toy data set and then just run a simple uh, Spark SQL query. So. I'm going to load a CSV file from a public bucket that uh, we own here, and I'm going to create a simple uh, view out of it. And the next step is going to be to run a simple query here to um, get the older passenger above uh, on board the Titanic. So this is the Titanic data set. And I'm going to export this. Um, so we see here the, the Titanic data set. Um, I'm going to export this output as a pandas data frame, older passengers here that I will be able to manipulate locally in my lab, on my, uh, in my notebook session. So all of those Spark command here, the magic commands are executed directly in the cluster, but I can always get the data directly here in my, in my notebook and then manipulate that if I want. So the, the most common use case would be to do a custom visualization of that data frame locally. So if I were to just, let's just do a uh, print older passengers. Uh, actually, let's do something a little simpler. Yeah, let's do that. So we see here it's a, just a pandas data frame. Um, so you could use that locally here to manipulate it. Uh, what I'm going to do next is uh, just going to shut down the cluster. So this kind of gives you an idea here, a very simple way of using the Dataflow Studio, these uh, sessions. Uh, once you're done with the particular session that you have, you can just kill it by calling the stop session command here. So I'm going to execute this. It's going to turn off the uh, Spark session. And um, kind of this could kind of give you an overview of the feature with a very simple query done in a notebook session. Um, so I hope this was useful. Uh, as I said, there's not much to do here. You have to, of course, write the dynamic groups and the policies for both the notebook session as well as Dataflow Studio, the Dataflow sessions. Um, you have to write the proper access policies for the buckets where your data reside. In this case, it didn't really matter because the, pub, the bucket was public. But if you have a data that uh, resides in one of your private buckets and you want to write the policies to give those uh, Spark, to give the Spark sessions access to that data. What I did next is I just created a simple notebook session. I installed a PySpark 3.2.1 environment, and that's it. At that point, from that point on, I can uh, manipulate the remote clusters by using the various magic commands that are pre-installed in the con environment. So I hope this was useful. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.